Okay, the Lewis structure for ammonia, NH3. You need to know how many valence electrons are involved. So nitrogen is in group 15. It has five valence electrons. So nitrogen probably needs three more electrons to be stable. Anything with 10 electrons in total will be stable. Nitrogen has seven, but five in the valence shell. Hydrogen is in group one, and it's got one valence electron. So I've got five and one and one and one and one. That's my total valence electrons there, and I want to know the pairs, so that's going to give me four. So nitrogen is the first in the formula, so almost certainly it goes in the middle and space the others around it. Uh, I need to make one molecule, so you can't draw that because... Uh, what the hell that is? That would be wrong. Hydrogen can only have one bond. It can only have one pair of electrons. So let me uh, make sure those hydrogens just have one pair of electrons or one bond. One, two, three. Uh, and I've got one more pair of electrons to go. I've accounted for three, so it goes up here. So that's the formula for, uh, that's the Lewis structure for ammonia. The other way to do it is ammonia, is, is the nitrogen, is in group five. One, two, three, four, five. And hydrogen's in group one. One valence electrons. Nitrogen's in group 15. Oh, yeah, they changed it, didn't they? Not five. Pair up the electrons. Valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. Lovely. And that gives you the same answer there. The central atom has four electron domains and one lone pair, which means it's going to be trigonal base pyramid, a trigonal base pyramid, such as this here. So that's the nitrogen, three bonds to the hydrogens, and then a lone pair there. How would you draw that in 3D? You would draw it uh, like this. This bond's going backwards into the page, into the screen, and this bond is coming forwards out of the screen. And this bond here is in the plane of the screen. And I like to put the lone pair there as well. The bond angle is 107 degrees. Well, hold on. If it was a tetrahedron, if it was a regular tetrahedron, this would be 109 and a half degrees. What's causing these to be squished down together to reduce this bond angle? This lone pair of electrons. This lone pair of electrons uh, is extra repulsive, if you will, to these bonded pairs. So it's going to repel them slightly, squash them down together to give 107 degrees. Let's look at the bond dipole and the molecular dipole. So for the bond dipole, you need to look at the electronegativities, measure of how much a, an atom is a, a, attracts a pair of electrons in a bond. So hydrogen has an electronegativity of 2.2, but nitrogen has a higher electronegativity of 3. So nitrogen is attracting the electrons in the bonds towards itself more than the hydrogen. So nitrogen has an electronegativity of 3, hydrogen's 2.2. So the bonds are polar, for sure. These bonds are polar. The nitrogen's going to be a little bit negative because it has a higher electronegativity, and the hydrogens are going to end up being a little bit positive. So polar bonds, and also the molecule is polar because the electrons are being pulled up towards the top of this molecule. They're being pulled up towards where the lone pair is. So not only are the bonds polar, the molecule is polar too. How would you say that? The molecule's polar because the bond dipoles don't cancel. So another way to look at the bond dipoles is to have it like this. You could draw these three hydrogens out like that. And you can see if you added up these vector arrows here that represent the bond dipoles, they don't cancel. If I had one more up here and it was a, and it was a, a proper tetrahedron, they would cancel. But they don't cancel. So that's why the molecule is polar. Let's do the formal charge, just for completeness. 
So nitrogen has five valence electrons, minus three bonds, minus two electrons in that lone pair. So nitrogen is zero. Hydrogen's in group one, one valence electron minus one bond, that's also zero. Nice. Double check, add up the formal charges, it should equal the charge on the molecule, which is zero, so that's good. And we're done.